for my presentation on the fourth dynasty, daughter of Pharaoh Khufu, Princess Nefertiabit, where we will be looking at the historical analysis of her character, as well as focus on the bead net dress that she wore. So get ready to join me for the next 20 minutes as we take a trip down fashion's memory lane. Not much is known about Princess Nefertia bit, but the little that is known about her gives us clues that she must have been a high priestess of the Egyptian Mystery School of An, based in Heliopolis or the town of North Anu. High priestesses and priestesses were all trained in music and dancing and studied the 42 books of Toth or Urms, which were later described by the Roman Catholic official of Alexandria. Thus, she must have been an erotic spiritual dancer proposed from the idea of her wearing the bead net dress. As we can see in her food stele, she is seated. She is seen seated in her chair wearing a leopard skin asymmetrical dress. The hieroglyphic specifically states that she is a vegan. This leopard skin dress affirms that she overcame her, her lower animal self, which means she was deified, gaining communion with the third plane sun goddess, Heru or Hathor. It is well known that high priests and priestesses of the school of An wore such leopard skin attire to acknowledge this feat. As you see in the bottom art relic, this is her brother seated on his chair, Prince Wepemnofret, in front of his food altar. Similarly, we can say that he also must have been a high priest of the school of An and followed the vegan diet and lifestyle as required. Furthermore, he was also deified since he is wearing the leopard skin garment. The stele is currently at the Harvard Museum in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The Egyptian Mystery School of An trained the Jewish patriarch Joseph, the prophet Moses, Greek philosophers and politicians such as Paul, Solon, Pythagoras, Plato, and Socrates, as well as theocratic members of ancient Egypt. Nefertiabit's food stele is the only art relic known about her so far, except there is a portrait bust of her in Munich, Germany, that was discovered from her tomb. I believe that creating this presentation about Princess Nefertiabit was the right move to make, since she had an influence in fashion in some way or another. I've seen, some, I've seen many articles online discuss her infamous leopard skin trademark and how women have valued the leopard pattern throughout the times. This limestone stele of Prince Webemnofret is one of its kind, and there aren't many other art relics of him. Here to the left stands the Great Pyramid of Giza, built in 2580 BC by Princess Nefertiabit's father, Pharaoh Khufu, or Cheops, with the Great Sphinx in front. It is interesting to note that the sun goddess Hedheru was part of the 12th sun god system of spirituality, which was followed by the builders of the Great Pyramids. The Controversy The father of Greek history, Herodotus, had some infamous words to say about Princess Nefertiabit, which has taken a toll on her reputation. He claims that Princess Nefertiabit was prostituting herself in order to raise the funds needed to assist her father, Khufu, in constructing the Great Pyramid of Giza. I wanted to challenge this notion, and so I've written a research paper to examine this claim. In my research process, I realized through other scholarly sources that Herodotus was not always 100% accurate in all of his writings. One of the main reasons I used to support my claim that he must have been wrong is the fact that she comes from a wealthy family lineage or background. Her grandmother, Queen Hetisferis I, was affluent and, men, and had many luxury items that were excavated from her tombs, including gold chairs, furniture, and many more. Moreover, it is obvious that Khufu was financially well off because of the economic surpluses from his turquoise and copper mining on the Red Sea. 
Why would Princess Nefertiti have had to prostitute herself in order to help her family gain more financial assets? The priestesses that paid homage, homage to Het Heru or Hathor were wholesome and dignified, which means there was no need for prostitution of any kind. Here to the left, you see my fashion illustration of Princess Nefertiti wearing the exciting beadnet dress. This specific beadnet dress was found in the Fourth Dynasty, not far from her, from her tomb. I used mixed media to execute this illustration, including colored pencils and markers. I also edited the illustration in my computer using creative programs like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. I wanted to place her in the middle surrounded by plants since the Egyptians loved nature. I also thought that adding a frog and grasshopper would be a great idea since they too were revered by the Egyptians. She is holding the Ankh symbol in her hand, which can also be interpreted as a handbag. I really enjoyed creating this illustration as it was a bit challenging to make because I had to make sure I had captured Nefertiti Bit's persona according to her food stele. Beadnet dress. Here we have the examples of the infamous beadnet dress in two different versions and a sistrum musical instrument with the symbol of sun goddess Hedheru or Hathar. The first dress in the right hand side was the dress that was worn in the fourth dynasty and is the one that Princess Nefertiti must have worn. There is a story that Pharaoh Shnefru, Khufu's father, was sailing his boat one day on the Nile River. He was advised by his vizier he should invite young women wearing the bina dress to enliven his downtrodden spirit. The story proves that the bina dress was worn to uplift the male spirit, which matches the notion that Nefertiti must have worn this bina dress to also uplift the male spirit for her erotic spiritual dances. This intricate dress is made out of faience beads, which comprises the whole dress and would have given it a musical tone. It is said that the beads dangling off the hemline would rattle and shake like the sistrum. The sistrum, like the one we have here in the left-hand side, was a highly used instrument by the priestesses of the sun goddess, Hedheru, and matron of dance and music. The second dress in the middle was used in the sixth dynasty by priestesses. It is a different design than the first one and shows more skin. Since ancient Egyptian women hardly wore any undergarments, it is assumed that they didn't wear any undergarments with this dress, which would have muffled the, the uh, sound of the dresses and the beaded musical production. The second dress has two pasties, which would have covered the female stance's nipples. This is 1225, the tomb of Nefertiabet, who was a daughter of Khufu. And this is in the Western Cemetery at Giza, west of the Great Pyramid. And uh, so there's Khafri standing overhead. There's a lot of rubble here, but this is this is her tomb here. And so we'll kiss a lot of frogs to get over here. So do we see any, any entrance? Any entrance to see Nefertiabet? Nefertiabet, where are you? Nefertiabet, where are you? Where is your entrance? Where is your entrance and how can we see you? This looks like 
it would have been the courtyard. If that was a Stella, it's sure been roughed up. The hieroglyphs are gone. Ah, that's the way in. And I'm not going to go in there because I couldn't get out. I don't have a rope. Darn it. That would be the way in right there. That is the way into the tomb. Okay. There's a little bit of an outrigger here, so some kind of offering room in here. I don't see any hieroglyphics. And so, yeah, Nefertia bit. Yep. Okay. Princess Nefertia bit's tomb. Here we have a video by the Egyptologist and professor Larry Paul. I had the honor of meeting this professor and director, Larry Paul, from the American Institute of Pyramid Research Center, who found my work on academia.edu and read my Princess Nefertiabit research paper. In this video, he recorded his visit to the Princess Nefertiabit tomb in the Great Pyramid Necropolis at Giza, Egypt. He was so kind to have also critiqued my paper and to provide me this video video. It has been an honor to do the research in analyzing historian Herodotus' infamous accusations about Princess Nefertiabit and to learn more about her sun goddess Hedheru, High Priestess Dancing. If you are interested in reading more of my papers regarding ancient Egypt, you can find me on academia at https colon forward slash forward slash independent dot academia dot edu forward slash Bridget Natasha Uloa Torres, and my email address is gu799 at lindenwood.edu. And here we have come to the end now. And the key takeaways are that Nefertia bit uh, wearing this bead net dress. She was a multifunctional high priestess. The bead net dress was a musical instrument. She followed the vegan lifestyle of the school of An, based in Heliopolis or North Anu. She is shown in her high priestess off-shoulder smock in her food stealing. Here is my second illustration of Princess Nefertiti modeling the bee net dress from the 6th dynasty. I used mixed media to carry out this illustration, including colored pencils and markers. I also edited the illustration in my computer using creative programs like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator she is wearing the sun goddess, Hedheru or Hathor cow headdress. She is also holding the Ankh symbol out in front of her, which can be taken as a purse. The music heard is by the Light and Sound Band, a band that loves to study ancient Egypt. Thank you very much for viewing my presentation. And